Welcome to Monday. It's July 1st, 2024, this day weather podcast being brought to you by Wyoming State Parks. Why wonder about the outdoors in Wyoming? Explore the statewide interactive outdoor recreation wonder map to find your next adventure. The weather was quite adventurous last evening and last night, as we'll show you here in a minute, as we had a very photogenic thunderstorm. We also had a very photogenic rainbow in Centennial over the weekend. That thunderstorm last night was a sight to see, and we'll show you a bunch of photos. Now, it's not going to be a hot start at all to the month of July. In fact, July is going to start off cooler than average, especially in the central and northern Rockies and the central and northern high plains, a large part of central and western Canada. It is not going to feel like July at all for the first week of the month. The heat will be trapped down into the southern areas and along the west coast and far western areas. We'll show you that here in a moment. With the deeper moisture staying south, while we will have shower and thunderstorm activity at times this week, it's going to be more directed into the southern areas. Nonetheless, as you plan your 4th of July activities, you'll have to plan for some spotty shower and thunderstorm activity. I think more than anything, you'll need to plan on temperatures maybe being a little cooler than you'd expect. Now, a great time lapse from Jan Curtis. You can follow Jan on Flickr at Northern Lights to see this video and many other fabulous photos that Jan takes all the time. This cloud formation, another shelf cloud. We had a really good shelf cloud a couple of weeks ago, and here's another one. The thunderstorm was very productive with rain if you were in the right location. Some areas got over an inch of rainfall, many areas a half to three quarters of an inch. Some areas, well, maybe a tenth of an inch. It all depended on where you were. This grew into a complex of thunderstorms that brought some really nice rain to many parts of the Nebraska Panhandle. So some folks got some really needed rain out of that one thunderstorm. Some folks just enough to settle the dust. Just a very photogenic storm. You can see this is calendar type photos that you're going to see that folks were able to get a good shot of. Many of these formations and clouds that you'll get with these thunderstorms like this with our wide open vistas just give you a really good opportunity to see them. At times, it looked kind of scary. That was a very menacing looking cloud. Now, so far, we haven't had reports of too much or too big of hail with this thunderstorm, which is a nice change of pace, although there was some hail reported as it went on through. I want to thank everybody for being weather watchers out there and taking these photos and sending them on in. This is a great part of the world to be a cloud watcher for sure. Boy, you can see the heavy rain just really coming down on that rain shaft there. As we take a look at the weather that's coming on up here, we've got moisture coming in, but it's a bit bisected. This is the plume of subtropical moisture that surged northward yesterday, got pretty far north all the way through northern and central Wyoming up into Montana and the Dakotas, as you can see here. But if you look at the water vapor, you can see there's a wedge of drier air kind of bisecting the heavier moisture that's right here and some moisture that's up here. So we're going to have the thunderstorm activity along this arc here and up here today, not as much in between. And you can see that bifurcation right there, the drier air coming on in, but moisture up north and deeper moisture here. When we take a look at the upper level chart at 500 millibars, you can see kind of why that moisture is getting bisected. There's yet another Pacific trough and cool front coming across the northern Rockies. Boy, we've had a lot of those this spring and summer so far, and we're going to have more. The high pressure ridge is going to shift off to the east, so the concentration of the moisture will be down here. This high pressure ridge building over the eastern Pacific is going to end up building there and staying there. So that's going to allow these lows and these fronts to continue to move across the northern U.S. through the 4th of July week. So this is today, this is Wednesday, this is Thursday. So basically for three days in a row, this high pressure ridge stays in the eastern Pacific and puts a lot of the central and northern Rockies in a wind pattern where winds aloft are coming in from the west-northwest. So we don't have desert air. The desert air gets bottled up in California, the southwestern United States, up into the Pacific Northwest. As we'll show you in a minute, this, is, this area is going to bake. But if you're under the northwest flow, you're going to be under a much cooler temperature regime. And that's how the week is going to unfold. Let's step through the next five days with where the thunderstorm activity is going to be. Afternoon and evening showers and thunderstorms are going to be along this axis here that I just showed you where the better moisture is. 
and some of these showers and thunderstorms are going to be strong. Here's the drier air going right down I-80 and intruding from the west. So this is today. This is what it's going to be like tomorrow, basically similar areas. This is what it's going to be like on Wednesday. So Wednesday, there's going to be a little bit of a resurgence of the moisture northward and uh, maybe a pretty active pattern right here. We'll need to watch that as a lot of folks will be starting their 4th of July. This is the 4th of July. The heavier thunderstorms are going to be more suppressed to the south and east because of the next cold front coming through. Now notice this large area of light blue and green. Now it doesn't look like a lot of deep uh, convective activity or deep thunderstorm coverage, but a large area of instability. And this is, if you notice, you notice how the blue is kind of hung up right along the divide here. The western slope dries out, the four corners dries out, that monsoonal moisture flow gets kind of cut off by the drier air coming in. This is representing a cool, moist air mass that's upslope. We are going to have upslope on the 4th of July, and that's going to really affect temperatures, as we'll show you here in a moment. Let's step through the temperatures over the next five days. These are the temperature anomalies today. You can see how cool it is across the north. Under the deeper moisture down here, cool as well hot in California. This will be a recurring theme all week. So this is today. This is Tuesday. Look at hot weather in California. Cool weather along and east of the divide. This is for Wednesday. Look at Montana and northern Wyoming. Very, very cool. This is the 4th of July. A cool moist air mass comes down along and near the divide. And that's that area of instability I showed you right here. That's going to lead to low clouds, some scattered showers, and thunderstorms for the 4th of July. So we'll have to keep an eye on that for firework displays and everything else. But certainly, when you look at temperatures like this for the 4th of July, not as warm as you would think, at least under those blue and green areas. If you want the heat, go to Portland or Sacramento or the Central Valleys of California and all the way up into the Pacific Northwest. It'll be quite hot. The heat will continue down here as well. Look at these high temperatures predicted on Thursday. These are the predicted high temperatures for the 4th of July. I'd call that comfortable. Look at, look at all the 70s, 60s and 70s over a good part of the northern and central high plains. There's the heat right there. So if you're underneath this first circle I drew right up there, very comfortable 4th of July, not, not hot at all. But we may also, east of the divide, have a lot of low and mid-level cloudiness and maybe some shower and thunderstorm activity. As we get closer, we'll keep an eye on it. Yeah, I'm not kidding. That's a snowfall forecast. Now, this is nothing to overly worry about, but it is going to be cool enough. There could be some snow mixing in with the rain showers as we get into the 4th of July period in the Bighorns, the Bear Tooth, the Yellowstone Plateau, and maybe even the Wind Rivers. Temperatures by Friday look like this. The colder air gets further to the south and to the east, while the heat continues in the far west. Now, eventually, this heat towards the second week of July will build back in more towards the Rockies. So it doesn't mean July is going to be like this all month. It's just going to start off cool. The middle of the month, the heat is on. Tropical activity is heating up. You might have been hearing about barrel over the weekend as it rapidly intensified. We also have Tropical Storm Chris that's just now entering eastern Mexico. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Barrel is the big one, the most organized and most intense system so far this season. We've got another disturbance coming off the African continent heading westbound. So the tropics are heating up. This is where Chris is going to go. Now you might look at that and say, well, that tropical moisture could come right up into here, but it doesn't look like it. The remains of Chris are going to go right across Mexico. Now, right across Mexico will be wet, but we only have one model that takes it northwestward. So right now, it's not looking like the remains of Chris will come up into the southwestern United States. This is the cone for barrel. Notice it's headed towards the Yucatan, staying well south of the U.S. Does that mean the U.S. is out of the woods, the Gulf? Well, I wouldn't say that just yet. It's pretty far out, and you know hurricanes. They can really come up with a mind of their own. It's going to be a strong major hurricane uh, here over the next couple of days. It will weaken a little bit as it goes a little bit further west. If you look at the predictions, you can see there's a tight solution area right here where it is heading westbound into the Yucatan and into Mexico again. 
But there is some hint that some of the model solutions are taking it up into East Texas or Louisiana. We'll just have to see. We've got time to figure it out. But the tropics are starting to fire up. Have yourself a good Monday. We'll see you tomorrow.